All right, review packet one, number 39. This is what it says. Uh, a function f is continuous from 0 to 5, including 0 and 5, and differentiable for all interior points, given that f of 0 is negative 2, and f of 5 is 3. Okay, so let's make a little graph here. So f of 0 is negative 2. And that's 0 and negative 2. And f of 5 is 3. So somewhere up here is 5 comma 3. Uh, which of the following statements must be true? Okay, that's an ugly 5. There we go. That's not any better. Okay, so f prime of c equals 1 for some c between 0 and 5. Okay, so let's find the average rate of change here. So the average rate of change is just the slope, algebra style. So 3 minus negative 2 is 5 over 5 minus 0, which is 5. So the average rate of change is 1. According to the mean value theorem, it has to equal the instantaneous rate of change somewhere between 0 and 5. It has to equal 1 uh, if it's a continuous and differentiable, which it is. So this is true because of the mean value theorem. All right, f of c equals 0 for some c such that between 0 and 5. Okay, so it's saying it does hit the x-axis somewhere on the interval. Well, that, it makes sense because it has, it's continuous and it has to go through the x-axis in order to get to this point up here. Uh, and we know that that is true because of the intermediate value theorem. So if a function is continuous, then it has to meet every y value in the interval between this y value and that y value. Uh, f of c equals negative 1 for some c. So will it go through negative 1? Yes, it has to go through negative 1. It might look something different than this line, but it's guaranteed that it'll go through um, the y value negative 1 because it's going to eventually get up to 3 from negative 2, and it's continuous. So this is also true because of the intermediate value theorem. So all three of them 